It's a matter of conjecture as to whether Bob could have moved up on the national scene. Would his style have been accepted by a national audience is purely speculative. There were and continue to be many viewpoints and opinions about Bob's technique. His cheerleader approach was his trademark. There was never any question where he stood. And in the final analysis, most people, the coaches, the professionals, the players, and most importantly, the fans, thought it was just fine. From those that knew him and heard him, first, former track coach and U of M athletic director, Don Canham. He was the first guy that, you know, was a homer and, and wanted everybody to know it. Uh, if you broadcast, as you know, if you broadcast a, a school for years and years, you become partial to it. But Bob would come on the air, you know, and he'd set the record straight. That there's only one school around, and that's Michigan. Mm. But the thing that was interesting, Mike, was when uh, he started broadcasting here on WHPAG, we had seven stations broadcasting Michigan football. That's where we went exclusively with JR and uh, WWJ. And... Uh, Euford came on the air. Every, all these other guys, these other seven stations, we had one from Toledo, uh, would try and be impartial. And all of a sudden, they, I watched them change over and become more and more like Euford as they saw his popularity. And an interesting thing that I don't think I've ever seen anywhere is the reason Euford went to JR was that he was on this little station in Ann Arbor, you know, WPAG, but right. people would bring radios to the stadium and listen to you for broadcasting the game. And the people all around him say, who is that nut, you know? And then all of a sudden, people in the whole stadium began to, to carry little pocket radios to listen to you for on this little WPAG. Mm -hmm. So JR, in their wisdom, said, hey, we have some here. So they asked, got him to come to, to Detroit. But you're right, he was uh, very partial, and uh, he changed broadcasting in, in this part of the country anyway. You, you, you listen to any of them. The guys doing Michigan uh, basketball or football now, and they make no bones about uh, you know who, who they're favoring. And here, from the man whose teams helped to inspire Bob Eufer's style, coach and AD Bo Schembechler. Well, f first of all, um, you know he was different than anybody who ever broadcast a game because uh, uh, a broadcaster is supposed to be impartial. And there was absolutely nothing impartial about him. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> our three-yard gain sounded like they were ripping the defense to shreds and picking up 15 of the crack. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> but he, um, the, the interesting thing was, when I came here, of course, he was broadcasting for a local station, and probably the coverage wasn't very good. And, and, and uh, WJR decided to hire him. Well, immediately people said, why, that station is crazy. He can't go big time being that biased. Yeah. Uh, so he went there and was a huge success because the Michigan people loved him and all of the other schools, and I've heard coaches say that, boy, I wish I had a guy like that broadcast in our game. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, and yeah. So, and so he sort of became an institution because he was he was different than anybody else, and and uh, the interesting thing about him is that that he was genuine. That's exactly the way he felt. And when he uh, saw that field goal at Ohio State uh, ruled uh, not good, and he said. No, 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 no. That's exactly the way he felt. 70 million people on TV, 88,000 here in you and I. And it is going to be snapped. It is snapped. It's spotted. It's kicked. It's end over end. And it is, it is, it is good. No good. No good. Oh, no. No, no. I can't believe that we missed that field goal. And I just hurt in every ounce of my body. You know, uh, we taped the pregame show on Friday afternoon. Right. He comes into my office, and the first thing I say to him is, you aren't going to like this, Bob. What's the matter? What's the matter? I said, Leach is out. 
hurt his ankle. He's not going to play against Notre Dame. Oh, no. no. <laughs> by, by the way, you do a great imitation of him. <laughs> I, I, used to, I used to really kid him about that. You know, I'd, I'd come up with all of all the bad things that happened to us during the week and how we can't win this game. Bottom line is, he was part of the Michigan family as opposed to working, let's say, in a situation uh, like I do where I'm working on a network where we're in a little different, unique situation and you try to be a little bit more objective and a little more balanced in your, your viewpoint. I have no problem at all with guys that want to cheer. For example, you take a look at Harry Carey with the Chicago Cubs. I think the one thing about Bob you had to appreciate was his love for Michigan and his love for the maize and blue and his love for the uniform. I have no problem with that at all in that situation. I really do. I think sometimes when you're part of the school, I think many a time uh, you find the announcers who do develop a love for that school, and they let that out, and it's, and it's very honest that they're, they really are rooting in a way. And so we've heard from a man who doesn't necessarily know the game from a coaching or broadcasting viewpoint, but most assuredly knows a lot about being behind the microphone. U of D and Detroit Piston basketball coach and now color man and commentator Dick Vitale. Here he tells us what he hears. Basically, he was a giant, really, throughout the Big Ten. If you mention the name Bob Eufer, he certainly was a unique, uh, different kind of broadcaster than most. But he had his own unique style. He was proud of it. And he displayed that in a very positive way. And I think that was beautiful. He was always the same. And he wasn't about to change. And he wouldn't be any different right now. He'd still be all fired up. I can hear him making a call. Here come the Wolverines. The Wolverines. This place is going crazy. It's wacky. The Wolverines are unbelievable. They're going to go to the Rose Bowl. I mean, mean, the guy would just pour it out like you couldn't believe. You know, in my travels, I've gotten to know some people. On the air, they might be one way. And then off the air, Another way, I think he was totally that same kind of person, uh, very dedicated, and he'd want to talk Michigan, Michigan, Michigan all day long. And to another highly regarded commentator and analyst, as a matter of fact, a former U of M Wolverine, Dan Deardorff. And, and you have to keep in mind that uh, back then, that radio was really the primary uh, link uh, uh, with your college uh, athletic program. Television didn't have quite the far-reaching influence uh, that it has today. And uh, Bob Buford was Michigan. Bob Buford was, was the, such a visible figure uh, in Michigan athletics, especially with the football program. He was, uh, we didn't go anywhere as a team that, that Bob wasn't with us. We didn't go to a dinner, to a luncheon, to any sort of official uh, function that, that, that Bob Buford wasn't, uh, wasn't there right along with us. He, he had everything but a helmet and shoulder pads. From a broadcaster standpoint, though, being a home broadcaster is in many ways the best job in the business because uh, you don't have to go to such great pains as I have to go to, say, to be neutral and to, Correct. And to appear to be completely uh, uninterested in who wins or who loses. And uh, it's much more fun. It's a, it's a lot more fun to do a ball game where you're, where you're actually there as kind of a representative of, of, of one of the teams. And, and when they win, by God, you get to win right along with them. And so you met with great success. And though many of his acquaintances comprise a list of who's who, Bob remained pretty much the same. His boyish grin and youthful exuberance remained. His values and loyalties were never compromised. His love for what he did consumed him from game number one to number 364. Actually, it's interesting that Joe Falls and different guys hit Dad hard regarding when they critiqued him. God, what a homer, what a... This guy's off the wall. What's mm. he about? When they met the man, when they got to know the man and knew that the man, this was not an act, very interesting in the, the way that they talked about my father and that they realized that this was a labor of love, this was a passion for this man. He was driven and he gave 110% with his preparation and his true love of Michigan. And again, his dad used to say, if you don't like it, people, you can the channel.